Welcome to this video summary of Peter Atiyah's groundbreaking book, Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity. Atiyah is a physician specializing in human longevity, trained at prestigious institutions such as Stanford, Johns Hopkins, and NIH. In this 400-page masterpiece, Atiyah provides solid advice on how to maximize your chances of living a long and healthy life by preventing life-shortening diseases and reducing frailty as you age. Atiyah's approach to healthcare, which he calls Medicine 3.0, prioritizes preventative care over reactive medicine. He emphasizes personalized measures such as exercise, nutrition, stress management, and sleep to prevent disease and promote longevity. What makes this book even more special is that Atiyah himself narrates the audiobook version, allowing you to hear his passion for the topic in his own voice. We highly recommend listening to this audiobook to gain a deeper understanding of Atiyah's insights and recommendations. So, don't miss out on the chance to gain invaluable insights from a leading expert in human longevity. Subscribe to our channel and listen to Peter Atiyah's Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity, narrated by the author himself, to learn how you can optimize your health and increase your chances of living a long and fulfilling life. You can listen it free from our link given below. Let Atiyah's passion and expertise inspire you to make positive changes in your life today. Peter Atiyah, a Stanford, Johns Hopkins, and NIH-trained physician who specializes in human longevity, has written a new book titled Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity. The 400-page textbook-like masterpiece outlines the relationship between health span and lifespan and provides solid advice on how to maximize your chances of avoiding life-shortening diseases and cut down on how long you spend being frail and infirm as you age. One of Atiyah's primary goals in writing Outlive was to encourage people to focus on their health span by understanding the complex science behind preventing chronic diseases such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and Alzheimer's. Atiyah emphasizes that optimizing one's health span, which he defines as the length of time you remain healthy and active, is more important than just focusing on lifespan. He provides easily digestible advice on exercise, nutrition, sleep, and more, without promoting any magical potions or snake oil. In an interview with Worth, Atiyah explains his philosophy behind Medicine 3.0, a model that prioritizes preventative care over reactive medicine. The goal of Medicine 3.0 is not to patch people up and get them out the door, removing their tumors and hoping for the best, but rather to prevent tumors from appearing and spreading in the first place. Or to avoid that first heart attack or to divert someone from the path to Alzheimer's disease, Atia says. In his medical practice, Early Medical, Atia helps patients assess their risk for chronic diseases and identify ways to improve their health span. He encourages a personalized approach, asking patients to consider what matters to them in three areas physical, cognitive, and emotional as all three impact quality of life. We ask our patients to think of a far more sophisticated and personalized view of their health span, Atiyah explains. What matters to you in three buckets, the physical bucket, the cognitive bucket, and the emotional bucket? All of those things speak to quality of life. Outlive offers solutions for optimizing each of these pillars. Some of the highlights include advice on exercise, nutrition, stress management, and sleep. Atiyah's book provides readers with an in-depth understanding of the complex science behind these recommendations and practical ways to implement them in their own lives. Atiyah's book provides a wealth of information on how to prevent chronic diseases and optimize one's health span. He believes that by understanding the complex science behind these diseases and taking a personalized approach to health, people can improve their quality of life and live longer, healthier lives. Outlive is an essential guide for anyone looking to make positive changes in their life and improve their overall health and well-being. In Outlive, Atiyah shares his patients' fears of developing neurodegenerative diseases, stating that my patients fear dementia more than any other consequence of aging, including death. 
They would rather die from cancer or heart disease than lose their minds, their very selves. Atiyah acknowledges the gravity of these conditions and highlights the importance of understanding the science behind them and taking proactive measures to prevent them. While there may not be a cure for diseases like ALS and Alzheimer's yet, Atia suggests that there are tactics that may help stave them off, particularly for those with a genetic predisposition. By prioritizing cognitive health and following the advice outlined in Outlive, individuals can not only protect themselves from these devastating conditions, but also improve their overall quality of life and increase their chances of living a long and healthy life. In his book Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity, Peter Atiyah stresses the importance of diet in optimizing cognitive health. Atiyah avoids the diet wars, but for patients whose genes indicate a high risk for Alzheimer's disease, he recommends two diets, keto and Mediterranean. Atiyah explains that metabolism plays a crucial role in preventing Alzheimer's disease, and addressing any metabolic issues is the first step in his approach. He aims to improve glucose metabolism, inflammation, and oxidative stress in at-risk patients. Several studies have shown that a high-fat, low-carb ketogenic diet can improve mental illness and epilepsy, as well as provide benefits for Alzheimer's prevention and management. Atiyah points to research indicating that when the body enters ketosis, the brain is fueled by a mix of ketones and glucose. In Alzheimer's patients, glucose becomes less effective as a brain fuel, but the ability to use ketones is maintained. Therefore, being in ketosis may prevent rapid cognitive decline and work as a preventative measure for people with Alzheimer's or a high risk of developing it. As Atiyah puts it, it makes sense to try to diversify the brain's fuel source from only glucose to both glucose and ketones. Think of it as a flex fuel strategy. In addition to the keto diet, Atiyah recommends the Mediterranean diet for cognitive health. This diet emphasizes monounsaturated fats and fewer carbs, while eating fatty fish regularly boosts omega-3 fatty acid levels to maintain brain health. As Atiyah writes in Outlive, my patients fear dementia more than any other consequence of aging, including death. They would rather die from cancer or heart disease than lose their minds, their very selves. Atiyah's recommendations for optimizing cognitive health through diet provide actionable steps for those who want to reduce their risk of cognitive decline and maintain their mental faculties for as long as possible. Atiyah emphasizes the importance of getting enough quality sleep to optimize your health span. He points out that even if you appear to be in great physical shape, not getting enough sleep can have serious negative consequences on your overall health. Research conducted by Kirk Parsley, a physician to Navy SEALs, found that these highly trained and physically fit individuals had hormone and inflammatory levels that were more typical of men decades older than them, due to their lack of sleep. Atia goes on to say, Now I recognize that sleep, diet, and risk of long-term disease are all intimately connected to each other. Knowing what I do now, I would bet that a few months of perfect sleep could have fixed 80% of my problems, even on a crappy diet. This shows how crucial quality sleep is for maintaining and optimizing overall health. According to Atia, not getting enough sleep can increase your risk for cardiovascular disease, as well as negatively impacting your long-term metabolic and cognitive health. To improve the quality of your sleep, Atiyah recommends several strategies, such as sleeping in a dark room, avoiding electronics before bed, and keeping your bedroom cool, around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Overall, Atiyah stresses the importance of prioritizing sleep as an essential pillar of optimizing your health span, and notes that improving your sleep quality can have a significant positive impact on your overall well-being. As we age, it's essential to prioritize physical health to prevent injury and isolation. While building muscle and looking buff may be admirable goals, Dr. Peter Atia emphasizes the importance of physical health as a form of retirement saving. 
he compares strength training to retirement saving, stating, just as we want to retire with enough money saved up to sustain us for the rest of our lives, we want to reach an older age with enough of a reserve of muscle and bone density to protect us from injury and allow us to pursue the activities that we enjoy. Atia believes that everyone should make physical health a priority regardless of their age. In his medical practice, he helps his patients assess their risk for chronic diseases like cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. He emphasizes the importance of exercise as a preventative measure against these diseases, and he recommends resistance training as a way to improve muscle and bone density. By focusing on physical health, we can increase our quality of life as we age. It can help us maintain independence and mobility, which is essential to enjoying our lives to the fullest. As Atia puts it, we want to reach old age without compromising the physical resilience that allows us to pursue the things that matter most. In addition to focusing on physical health as a preventative measure against injury and isolation as you age, Atia recommends training for the centenarian decathlon, which involves intentionally preparing for the activities you care most about continuing into your later years. According to Atia, it's important to start building up strength and cardiovascular stamina beginning in your middle years in anticipation for a normal, but sharp, drop in your 70s. Atiyah acknowledges that the idea of physical decline can be a morbid topic, but ignoring it won't make it any less inevitable. That's why he works with his patients to develop a list of physical aspirations for their last decade of life. These aspirations may include seemingly mundane tasks like opening a jar, climbing four flights of stairs, hiking 1.5 miles on a hilly trail, or even having sex. Atia then helps his patients create a plan to train now for these activities in the future. As Atia notes, it's crucial to stop pointlessly exercising just because we think we're supposed to, and instead, focus on specific goals that will support our independence and quality of life in our later years. I promise, you can do better, he writes. By training for the Centenarian Decathlon, we can shift our focus from simply trying to look good to taking actionable steps towards a healthier, more fulfilling future. Atia emphasizes the importance of aerobic training, or Zone 2 training, in promoting longevity and mitochondrial function, which declines with age. He explains that Zone 2 exercises such as jogging, cycling, or swimming can help stimulate mitochondrial function and support metabolic health and athletic performance. Mitochondrial health becomes important as we grow older because one of the most significant hallmarks of aging is a decline in the number and quality of our mitochondria, Atia writes. Atia suggests that Zone 2 training should be maintained for 30 to 45 minutes and should be at around 60 to 70 percent of your maximum heart rate. This kind of aerobic training helps to build a foundation for a healthy and long-lasting life, even though most people won't be able to see it. I think of Zone 2 as akin to building a foundation for a house. Most people will never see it, but it is nevertheless important work that helps support virtually everything else we do, in our exercise regimen and in our lives, Atia says. By incorporating Zone 2 training into your workout routine, you can help support your overall health and well-being, especially as you age. It's never too late to start building a strong foundation for a healthy and fulfilling life. In his book Outlive, Peter Atia emphasizes the importance of emotional health in achieving a longer and healthier life. Atia notes that emotional health is often overlooked in discussions of health span, despite its significant impact on overall well-being. He highlights the prevalence of emotional health disorders in his patients and acknowledges his own struggles with depression. Atia argues that preventing emotional health disorders should be a key part of Medical 3.0, which focuses on long-term prevention. He likens this paradigm shift to the shift from Medicine 2.0 to Medicine 3.0, which places greater emphasis on preventing chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease. Atia notes that there are many preventative measures that can be taken to maintain emotional well-being. These include regular exercise, a healthy diet, 
quality sleep and building strong relationships with friends and family. Atiya also recommends mindfulness practices like meditation and therapy as effective tools for improving emotional health. In the words of Atiya himself, we need to shift the conversation to include emotional health as an essential part of health span. Until we do that, we will continue to ignore the single most significant threat to our well-being, happiness, and longevity. Working with a therapist is one of the most important steps you can take for emotional well-being, according to Atiya. In his book, he discusses his positive experience with dialectical behavior therapy, DBT, which is a type of psychotherapy that aims to help people learn how to manage their emotions and cope with stress in a healthy way. Atiya notes that DBT has been backed up by clinical trials as an effective treatment for suicidal and self-harming patients. He writes, One thing I like about DBT is that it is backed up by evidence. Clinical trials have found it to be effective in helping suicidal and self-harming patients stop their dangerous behavior. While working with a therapist who is trained in DBT is recommended, there are some tactics from this type of therapy that you can incorporate into your own routine, such as mindful breathing exercises. By learning healthy coping mechanisms and stress management techniques, you can support your emotional health and improve your overall quality of life. As Atiyah says, taking care of our emotional health is about long-term prevention, just like our approach to preventing cardiovascular disease. In his book, Atiyah emphasizes the importance of social connection for longevity. He notes that loneliness and social isolation can lead to negative health outcomes, including an increased risk of mortality. According to Atiyah, Feeling connected and maintaining healthy relationships with others and oneself is just as important as physical health markers like glucose metabolism and lipoprotein profile. Atiyah acknowledges that building and maintaining social connections can be difficult, especially as people age and face new challenges like retirement, illness, or loss of loved ones. However, he argues that it is crucial to prioritize this aspect of health and take proactive steps to foster relationships. As we age, our social networks tend to shrink. Our parents, grandparents, and close friends pass away, and we may retire and lose contact with former colleagues. But as the evidence shows, social isolation is one of the greatest risk factors for morbidity and mortality, Atia writes. He encourages readers to seek out opportunities to connect with others, whether through community groups, volunteering, or hobbies. Atia also emphasizes the importance of self-connection or cultivating a healthy relationship with oneself. This can involve practices like mindfulness, self-reflection, and self-care. As Atiyah puts it, don't underestimate the importance of social connection and emotional health to living a long, healthy life. The author, Peter Atiyah, is a highly respected physician who has specialized in human longevity. He is not interested in promoting outlandish claims that are unsupported by scientific evidence. Rather, he advocates a comprehensive and personalized approach to health that can help people achieve a longer and more fulfilling life. Outlive does not promise to provide any shortcuts or magic potions for achieving longevity. Instead, Atia focuses on the importance of optimizing health span and preventing chronic diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and Alzheimer's. He provides practical and easily digestible advice on exercise, nutrition, sleep, and other lifestyle factors that can make a significant difference in improving health outcomes. Atia's approach is rooted in the latest scientific research on longevity and aging. He recognizes that the key to a longer and healthier life is not just about living longer, but also about maintaining physical, cognitive, and emotional well-being well into old age. This involves taking a more sophisticated and personalized view of one's health span and focusing on what really matters to individuals in terms of quality of life. In an interview with Worth, Atiyah emphasized the importance of assessing one's risk for chronic diseases and taking steps to improve one's health span. He suggests thinking of health in three buckets the physical, 
cognitive, and emotional and optimizing each of these areas for a better overall outcome. This is the foundation of Atiyah's medical practice, Early Medical, where he helps patients identify their individual risk factors and develop personalized strategies for optimizing their health span. Overall, Outlive is a highly informative and practical guide to achieving longevity and maximizing health span. It is not about unrealistic claims or quick fixes, but rather a process of making small but significant changes that can lead to a longer and more fulfilling life. Whether you are interested in longevity or simply want to improve your overall health and well-being, this book is an essential read. In the first few chapters of Outlive, Peter Atia takes readers on a journey through his own background and experiences, which ultimately led him to develop his paradigms surrounding health. He identifies the top causes of death in the West, which include cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, neurodegenerative disease, and cancer, and offers practical advice on how to address these issues through exercise, diet, sleep, and targeted pharmaceuticals. One of the key ideas in Atiyah's book is the concept of Medicine 3.0, which he introduces in the second chapter. He argues that traditional medicine has been too focused on treating disease after it occurs, rather than proactively optimizing health to prevent disease from developing in the first place. We should be looking for ways to optimize health well in advance of disease process, Atiyah writes. This approach to healthcare involves looking at each person as a unique individual and tailoring interventions to their specific needs, rather than relying on one-size-fits-all treatments. Atiyah argues that this personalized approach is essential for preventing and managing chronic diseases. Atiyah also touches on the limitations of the current healthcare system, which is largely driven by diagnosis codes and third-party payer systems that often fail to address individual needs. He suggests that a shift toward personalized medicine could help to address these limitations and lead to better health outcomes for patients. In discussing his approach to health, Atiyah emphasizes the importance of taking a holistic view of the body and considering all aspects of health, including physical, cognitive, and emotional well-being. He writes, what matters to you in three buckets, the physical bucket, the cognitive bucket, and the emotional bucket. All of those things speak to quality of life. Overall, Outlive offers a compelling vision for a new era of healthcare that focuses on optimizing health and preventing chronic disease. As Atia writes, the ultimate goal is to help you live not just longer, but also better. In Chapter 3 of the book, Peter provides an insightful perspective on the objective, strategy, and tactics required to enhance health span and lifespan. The objective is to push out both lifespan and health span to the greatest degree possible. To achieve this, we need to minimize our risk exposure to the four horsemen cancer, dementia, type 2 diabetes, and CVD, which is our strategy. The tactics we use to achieve this could include diet, exercise, targeted pharmaceuticals, and other measures. Peter's approach is different from traditional medicine, which focuses on treating diseases after they have developed. Instead, his approach is more like engineering, where we work proactively to build enough capacity now so that we still have enough left in the future to meet our goals. For example, if someone is 40 and wants to be functional in old age, they need to consider the predictable decline in physical performance with age and build enough capacity now to meet their goals in the future. One of the major takeaways from this chapter is the importance of exercise as the hedge against aging. Peter acknowledges that he has put nutrition in a back seat to exercise and provides a compelling case for why. He also lays out dietary recommendations without getting embroiled in the tribalistic debates surrounding different diets. As Peter explains, tactics flow from strategy, which flows from objective. To achieve optimal health span and lifespan, we need to have a clear objective, a sound strategy, and effective tactics. And we need to take a proactive approach to our health, working to build enough capacity now so that we can meet our goals in the future. In Chapter 4 of the book, 
Peter takes a closer look at centenarians, individuals who have lived to the age of 100 or more, and examines what we can learn from them about longevity and healthy aging. While genetics certainly play a role in determining lifespan, Peter argues that epigenetics, or the interaction between our genes and our environment, is a more crucial factor in determining how long and how well we live. Through his research and interviews with centenarians, Peter identifies several common lifestyle factors that may contribute to their longevity, such as a diet rich in plant-based foods, regular physical activity, and strong social connections. He also notes that many centenarians have a positive outlook on life, a sense of purpose, and a willingness to adapt to change. However, Peter also acknowledges that centenarians are not a perfect model for healthy aging, as some may have developed chronic diseases in their later years or may have relied on medications or medical interventions to maintain their health. He emphasizes the importance of using centenarians as a starting point for investigating healthy aging, rather than relying solely on their experiences to guide our own behavior. Overall, Chapter 4 offers valuable insights into the factors that may contribute to healthy aging and encourages readers to consider the role of lifestyle choices in shaping our health and longevity. Chapter 5 of the book focuses on the topics of fasting, rapamycin, autophagy, AMPK, and MTOR, and their relationship to lifespan and healthspan. The author notes that there has been a recent trend towards extreme fasting, but that this approach may not be the best way to improve health span. Peter has also modified his position on fasting and calorie restriction, and now takes a more measured approach to these practices. The author argues that fasting and calorie restriction may be less effective than exercise in promoting health span, particularly when animals are fed a species-appropriate diet. The author notes that there may be a case for fasting in certain circumstances, such as when someone has been sick for a long time and needs a hard system reset. However, the potential loss of muscle mass associated with fasting and calorie restriction must be weighed against the potential benefits. Overall, the author sees exercise as a more effective way to promote health span, as it provides adaptation in addition to other benefits. As the author says, in many regards I can see nothing that fasting and CR offer that exercise does not also offer, with the added benefit of adaptation to the exercise. This suggests that exercise may be a more sustainable and effective way to improve health span than extreme fasting or calorie restriction. However, the chapter on fasting and rapamycin is still a valuable resource for those interested in exploring these topics further. Chapter 6 of the book focuses on the emergence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease NAFLD, which is becoming a huge problem in modern society. NAFLD is a condition where excess fat accumulates in the liver of people who consume little to no alcohol. The prevalence of this disease is increasing at an alarming rate and is now commonly seen in children as well, which was unheard of 30 years ago. This is a concerning trend and portends a bleak future for those affected by this disease. The author believes that this topic should be a wake-up call for the healthy at any size crowd. It is not just about weight and body positivity, it's about the serious health consequences that can result from a sedentary lifestyle and unhealthy dietary choices. It is essential to address this issue to prevent a public health crisis in the future. In the accompanying video, Peter Atia also emphasizes the importance of understanding NAFLD and its connection to metabolic health. He discusses the underlying mechanisms of the disease and how it can progress to more severe conditions such as non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, and cirrhosis. Overall, Chapter 6 provides valuable insights into the current crisis of abundance and the need to prioritize metabolic health to prevent the development of NAFLD and related diseases. Chapter 7 of Peter Atia's book delves into the number one killer on the planet, heart disease. In this chapter, Peter shares his own family history of heart disease, which is not very promising. 
His uncles died of heart attacks at young ages, his father suffered an initial heart attack at a relatively early age, and Peter himself has documented early stages of CVD which he is managing with extremely aggressive drug therapy. While some followers of other experts in the field of heart disease may feel at odds with Peter's recommendations, particularly his eye-wateringly low LDLC goal of 1020 mg HDL, Peter acknowledges that there are a host of risk factors involved in this process. He places lipoproteins in the necessary but not sufficient category for this process and takes a very aggressive approach to lipid lowering. In a video accompanying the book, Peter further elaborates on the topic of heart disease and his approach to managing it. He stresses the importance of understanding one's individual risk factors, as they can differ greatly from person to person. While some individuals may be able to achieve optimal heart health through lifestyle changes alone, others may require medication to manage their risk factors. Peter also emphasizes the importance of working with a healthcare provider who is knowledgeable and open-minded about different approaches to managing heart disease. He acknowledges that his approach may not be right for everyone and encourages individuals to do their own research and advocate for themselves when it comes to their health. Chapter 8 of Peter Atiyah's book Outlive delves into the topic of cancer. Atiyah provides an interesting perspective on cancer prevention, highlighting the impact of lifestyle factors such as obesity, smoking, and regular exercise on the risk of developing cancer. He emphasizes that if one takes care of their body by avoiding unhealthy habits and engaging in physical activity, the likelihood of developing all types of cancer is significantly reduced. In addition to discussing preventive strategies, Atiyah also explores the potential of newer immunotherapy options to revolutionize cancer treatment. He acknowledges that while there is much work to be done in this field, the potential of immunotherapy to cure cancer cannot be ignored. Atiyah also gives a nod to the potential of a ketogenic diet and fasting as adjunctive cancer therapies. While he does not suggest that these approaches can cure cancer, he believes that they may have a role in improving treatment outcomes and quality of life for cancer patients. Overall, Atiyah's chapter on cancer provides a comprehensive overview of the disease and the various approaches to prevention and treatment. It highlights the importance of lifestyle factors in cancer risk reduction and underscores the potential of cutting-edge therapies to change the landscape of cancer treatment. Chapter 9 brings together all the previous chapters to discuss how to achieve a long and healthy life. Peter emphasizes that there is no magic pill or one-size-fits-all solution, and that longevity is the result of multiple factors working together. He explores the importance of genetics, but also stresses the role of epigenetics and the impact that lifestyle factors like diet, exercise, and stress management can have on gene expression. Peter also touches on the importance of social connections and purpose in life, citing research that shows how social isolation and lack of purpose can have negative effects on health and longevity. He provides examples of people who have lived well into their 90s and 100s, and analyzes what they did differently than others who did not live as long. The chapter concludes with a discussion on the potential for medical advancements, such as gene therapy and stem cell therapies, to extend human lifespan. Peter is cautiously optimistic about these possibilities, acknowledging that while they may hold promise, they are still in their early stages and come with potential risks. Overall, the chapter stresses the importance of taking a holistic approach to health and longevity, and provides practical tips and strategies for achieving a long and healthy life. Chapter 10 provides a roadmap for aging effectively. Peter emphasizes the importance of planning ahead for your future self and designing your lifestyle to optimize your physical and mental well-being as you age. This leads into Chapter 11 where Peter argues that exercise is the most important factor we have control over when it comes to aging well. He advocates for a comprehensive fitness routine that includes strength training, Zone 2 cardiovascular exercise, and VO2 max training. Peter also makes a crucial observation about exercise, if you want to maintain a certain level of physical capacity as you age, 
you need to build enough headroom today to buffer the inevitable decline that comes with aging. To illustrate this point, he proposes a thought experiment called the Centenarian Decathlon, where you pick 10 activities that you want to excel at in your 9th or 10th decade of life and then work backwards to figure out how to achieve that level of fitness today. Essentially, if you want to maintain good physical capacity in your later years, you need to be in really good shape now and then work to maintain that level of fitness as you age. Chapter 12 delves into the specifics of how to structure your cardio and strength training to achieve your goals. Peter provides guidance on how to train in each of the cardiovascular zones and how to design a strength training routine that will help you build and maintain muscle mass as you age. This chapter is essentially a blueprint for how to train for your own centenarian decathlon and ensure that you have the physical capacity to enjoy life to the fullest in your later years. In Chapter 13, Peter Atia explores the importance of mobility, stability, and movement quality in maintaining overall health and preventing injury. He emphasizes that maintaining proper alignment and balance in our movements is crucial to prevent wear and tear on our joints and muscles. This is particularly important as we age, as our bodies become less resilient and more prone to injury. Atia acknowledges that while the information he provides in his book is valuable from a big-picture perspective, most people will need help constructing a long-term plan to achieve their fitness and mobility goals. To that end, he recommends several resources, including the Morpheus platform for tracking and monitoring recovery and training bouts, and Power Athlete and Basis SNC for strength and mobility training. Atia's focus on movement quality and stability is a valuable addition to the discussion of health and fitness. By prioritizing these aspects of our physical well-being, we can not only improve our athletic performance, but also prevent injuries and maintain our overall health as we age. Chapter 14 is an interesting take on nutrition that goes beyond the usual debates about diets and instead looks at nutritional biochemistry. The author, Peter Atia provides a set of guidelines for healthy eating without prescribing any specific diet. He recommends a higher protein intake, up to a gram of protein per pound of body weight, while also being mindful of the glycemic load of foods. Atia also suggests wearing a continuous glucose monitor to track how different foods affect your blood sugar levels. Additionally, he acknowledges that some people may see negative lipid shifts with high fat or saturated fat intake and may need to adjust their diet accordingly. Overall, Atia's approach is about setting boundaries or lane lines for healthy eating rather than pushing a specific diet agenda. This can be a useful way to de-emotionalize the process of choosing what to eat and instead focus on the biochemistry of nutrition. By emphasizing the importance of protein intake and being mindful of glycemic load, Atia provides a solid foundation for a healthy diet that can benefit a wide range of people. Chapter 15 is all about practical strategies to put nutritional biochemistry into practice. Peter lays out a simple but elegant insight, there are three main ways to control calories, calorie restriction, dietary restriction, and time restriction or some combination of these. He emphasizes that the main issue is calorie control, but with some caveats. Studies in primates comparing calorie restriction with food quality showed that a higher quality diet fared just as well as the calorie restricted animals, with fewer downsides. This is a remarkable finding that the evidence-based crowd might not like, but it's hard to argue with the results. One of the most interesting aspects of this chapter is the emphasis on food quality. Peter makes one of the best cases for food quality that you'll find in any book. He also discusses evolutionary biology, but doesn't quite step up to the plate and say that a low-glycemic, paleotype diet is optimal. Instead, he lays out some lane lines to stay within and lets readers come to that conclusion without the baggage of a specific diet name that might alienate some people. The last part of this section looks at the potential pros and cons of fasting, time-restricted eating, and other similar strategies. 
Peter ultimately makes the case that extended fasting is not just unnecessary but likely counterproductive for many people. There has been a strong push for people to eat one or perhaps two meals per day, but Peter suggests that it might be smart to be active enough to need three good meals per day. This is an interesting notion, and it's worth considering how being more active might change our dietary needs. Overall, Chapter 15 provides practical guidance for putting the principles outlined in the previous chapters into practice. It emphasizes the importance of food quality and suggests some strategies for calorie control that are backed by science. Chapter 16 emphasizes the importance of sleep in achieving a healthy life and health span. While exercise is undoubtedly important, the significance of sleep cannot be overstated. The chapter begins with Peter's personal experience with sleep deprivation during his residency, which led him to realize the detrimental effects of lack of sleep on physical and mental health. He also draws from the insights of his friend, Dr. Kirk Parsley, a retired Navy SEAL and physician, who emphasizes the importance of sleep for optimal health and performance. Peter cites various studies that demonstrate how poor and short sleep impacts metabolic health, increases cancer rates, and leads to accidents and suicide. He also highlights the role of circadian biology in regulating the sleep-wake cycle and how disruptions to this cycle can lead to various health problems. The chapter offers practical advice on how to improve sleep quality, including strategies for creating a sleep-friendly environment, establishing a regular sleep routine, and avoiding blue light exposure before bedtime. Overall, the chapter makes a compelling case for the importance of prioritizing sleep for overall health and longevity. It underscores the need to recognize the impact of sleep on every aspect of our lives and to take proactive steps to optimize sleep habits. The insights in this chapter provide an excellent starting point for anyone looking to improve their sleep hygiene and overall well-being. Chapter 17 delves into Peter's personal struggles with achieving success and the impact that his past traumas had on his work ethic and self-destructive tendencies. Throughout the book, Peter is portrayed as a highly successful individual, driven by his passion for health and longevity. However, in this chapter, he reveals a darker side to his personality that was shaped by his difficult childhood and the death of his father. Peter describes how he became addicted to work and perfectionism, using his achievements as a way to cope with his pain and insecurity. Peter's honesty about his struggles with mental health is a refreshing departure from the typical narrative of high achievers. He admits to having a deep sense of imposter syndrome, feeling like he's not good enough despite his many accomplishments. He also discusses his struggles with depression and suicidal thoughts. One of the key takeaways from this chapter is the importance of seeking help when struggling with mental health. Peter eventually seeks out therapy, which helps him to confront his past trauma and move towards a healthier, more balanced life. He also emphasizes the importance of community and building relationships with others, both for emotional support and for personal growth. Overall, Chapter 17 of The Drive is a powerful reminder that even the most successful individuals struggle with personal demons. Peter's vulnerability in sharing his story is a testament to the importance of mental health and seeking help when needed. This final chapter gives way to an epilogue that says I used to subscribe to the Silicon Valley view of longevity, I could biohack and hack and hack my way to longevity, but if my life sucked, what was the point? The epilogue of Peter Atiyah's book offers a reflection on his journey towards a better understanding of longevity and what it means to live a fulfilling life. Atiyah admits that he used to be a firm believer in the Silicon Valley approach to longevity, which emphasized biohacking and optimizing one's body to extend lifespan. However, he realized that focusing solely on physical health was not enough to achieve true longevity. In this final chapter, Atiyah delves into the importance of emotional health, highlighting the impact that trauma and stress can have on physical health and longevity. He shares his own struggles with mental health and how he came to understand the critical role that emotional well-being plays in overall health and longevity. 
Atiyah emphasizes that true longevity is not just about living a longer life, but about living a better life. He notes that many people who prioritize physical health above all else may end up sacrificing their relationships, happiness, and overall well-being in the process. Ultimately, Atiyah's message is one of balance. He encourages readers to prioritize not only their physical health but also their emotional and mental health, and to seek out meaningful connections and experiences that bring joy and fulfillment to their lives. Outlive is a book that offers a comprehensive and science-based approach to achieving a long and healthy life. It's a guide that emphasizes the importance of understanding the interconnectedness of physical, emotional, and mental health, and the role that they play in overall well-being. Atiyah's journey towards a better understanding of longevity is one that can inspire and guide readers towards a more holistic approach to health and well-being. By embracing balance and prioritizing all aspects of health, we can all strive towards a longer, healthier, and more fulfilling life. If you want to learn more about how to live a longer, healthier, and more fulfilling life, we highly recommend checking out Peter Atiyah's book Outlive. This book covers a range of topics from nutrition and exercise to sleep and emotional health, all with a focus on helping you achieve longevity. To get your own copy of the book, simply click the link in the description below to purchase it or listen to the free audiobook narrated in the author's own voice for even more insights and discussions on health and wellness. And don't forget to subscribe us. Remember, taking care of your body and mind is essential for living a happy and fulfilling life. So, invest in yourself and start making positive changes today.